No mai, haere mai. Welcome to the Maxim Institute podcast. My name is Jason, and I'm the communications manager at Maxim Institute. This is our weekly short form podcast. These podcasts are released in tandem with our weekly column and are a chance for you to hear in depth from the column's author about some of the thinking that went into producing their final piece. Today, we talked to former intern Madeline Smith about her latest column. Maddie, welcome along to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Today, we're talking about your column, Want to Buy Your Child Anxiety, Get Them a Smartphone. That's the title. Um, And in your piece, you compare drugs and alcohol to smartphones. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, how can these be comparable? Well, that is true. They're different things. One's, um, you know, drugs and alcohol, very physical effects. Um, Smartphones have very um, non-physical effects, you could say. Um, But they do have quite similar um, results when used for long periods of time and and abused. Um, We're seeing that rates of anxiety and depression and and self-harm are going up, not just in New Zealand, but across the developed world. Um, and effects of drugs and alcohol when used for young people and abused also include things like, you know, decreased cognitive abilities um, and also major social um, effects as well, like social to the detriment of people really as well. Um, So they're not the same thing, but they do have, you know, detrimental effects that that we should be aware of and and be careful of. So you're basically saying that drugs and alcohol have a certain effect on the brain. Um, Smartphones have another similar effect. They're not exactly the same. They can be compared. Um, What actually lies at the heart of this issue of adolescent mental health and and the fact that it's in such a poor state? Because uh, smartphones, they're they're a technology, but inherently in and of themselves, um, is there anything about them that that make them harmful for children? Or yeah, speak to that. Well, smartphones have uh, internet access. Um, you're able to take them with you wherever you want to go, and you have access now to almost everybody in the entire world. You almost have like a um, a substitute for connectedness. You don't need your friends in person. You can just have them online, um, and and that seems to have you know really terrible effects for socialization for kids. They're not you know, going outside as much. They're spending much more time on the internet. Um, But then other things as well, because they're spending more time on the internet, it's a more addictive, it it is addictive, the internet, Um, social media. It's designed to keep you scrolling, to keep you on it. Um, We've had uh, the internet for a while now. What is it about this time that is particularly alarming? Well, we see um, the anxiety and depression rates go up around 2010 and then they start to rise really really quickly that's interesting i think i remember some important technology coming out yeah. around that time well in about 2007 is when smartphones become available iphone is invented that really, um, wow. and then by like 2013 you have instagram on almost every smartphone like everyone can have access to instagram um so people you know people have had the internet they can spend a lot of time on the internet but you used to have to go to your own home and be on your own computer and you were only able to do whatever you wanted there but now you can take it with you so so that seems to be the catalyst for this massive increase in anxiety and depression so rather than just smartphones in general you're actually putting your finger on social media as one of the Mm. key key issues i think so i think you can't you can't look at smartphones without social media so they're really connected um, but at the same time, you have like increased texting and people, you know, are able to contact people far more easily once they have a portable smartphone um, or at least a cell phone. Um, but you can't really take them separately. They are, you know, the same. And if we're really wanting to address, you can't really just address the problem of social media without addressing the problem of the smartphone as well, which I think is what the National Party have done with their smartphone ban in schools. Um, you can't ban social media use, really, but you can ban your smart the smartphone. You can much more easily able to, you know, create measures around that. So at a time where technology is facilitating correction, connections rather around the world, we're actually seeing uh, loneliness 
disconnectedness, um, all of these things. So do you think that suggests something about the quality of relationships being had uh, mediated via technology? Yeah, I think it's definitely true. The technology connects us amazingly, but the connection is not the same as having someone in person. We definitely saw this through lockdown when we were all on Zoom together, but it was not the same as being in person. Um, and I think everyone really felt that. The US Surgeon General called for tobacco style warnings on social media. Um, wh- what do you think that would look like? I don't really know. I think, um, I don't know how you would put like pictures of social media, like detrimental effects on social media. It's kind of what we want to avoid is some of those like really damaging pictures. But I, I guess the essence of his claim is like, you know, this is just as bad as tobacco. We've taken such a strong stance there and and we've seen results. So we need to do something similar. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly what it would look like. So say we institute these warnings, do you think that would then make a difference? Because there are some kids who are hopelessly addicted to their phones, uh, possibly to social media. And we know for for smokers, right, um, if they're hooked, it doesn't matter what's on the packaging, they're going to continue to smoke. That's not going to be enough by itself. So, so what are some other sort of solutions that may support maybe enhanced education around the harms or dangers of social media? I think that's kind of what I was trying to get to in the column. Like, it seems the problem is so widespread. Kids are addicted in many cases. So, and parents find it hard to put boundaries in place for Isn't it kids. simply a case of just saying, uh, actually, no, to me, this is the this I is the limit? I don't know if it is simply the case because, well, I, I've seen, like, at least anecdotal reports um, from researchers saying that, like, kids can get quite aggressive um, when you say, no, you can't use your phone now. Um, and then also I think it's really easy for kids to say, oh, but everyone else has one, like, you, as a parent, it's very hard to say to your kid, no, we're not going to get you a smartphone and we're just going to let you use a brick phone like I had to use when I first got a phone. But, yeah, instead of just being like we, we give your phone purely for communication purposes, um, kids now want uh, like a fancy smartphone, an iPhone, and everyone else has them too. So they're so widespread. Um, that's why I was sort of thinking maybe it is time for the government to say something that across the board is applied to everybody. So everyone is in the same position that we're protecting all kids as best we can the same way. Um, what what preliminary results have we seen from the, the current government's uh, phone ban in schools? I think I know um, particularly when it was first introduced in some schools at the start of the year – where they were sort of establishing their own policies um, within their own schools. They did start to see kids engage with one another. They weren't spending so much time on their phones during break times, but they were bringing their packs of cards to play. Or, you know, um, I know Marianne, the researcher here, knows someone who said that kids use skipping ropes at school again, which apparently kids weren't using for a while and have been, you know, for years and years have been stuck in the cupboard, but now being pulled out and, and being um, used to entertain themselves at lunch times. And I think the real effects for the purpose of the policy, which was education results, will be seen over time. Um, but we are starting to see better engagement between students at school. Um, I can hear some in the audience going, well, okay, fine, the government puts these regulations out and everyone has to obey, but, I mean, even if you think about the instance of vulnerable kids in, in houses where things aren't running as they should, right? They're not getting the food they need. The government has, has a responsibility to those kids to ensure their needs are being met. If their parents aren't you know, meeting their obligations, well, the government should step in. And yet there are kids going without food on a daily basis. I know teachers who can go, yep, when kids come into the classroom, I can point to the, to the number of kids who are coming without food um, because there's negligence there in parenting. So we, we, again, we've got a case of parental neglect of some kind, um, be it through malice or ignorance or whatever. When we're applying that to the cell phone ban, how, how would government uh, regulation even even help that? And are there some you know possible uh, approaches the government could take to ensure that those moves they made were actually effective? I think it is definitely a good point you make. Um, the government, you know, is supposed to meet all sorts of obligations that it can't feasibly meet, but we don't then take those obligations off the government. Um, 
particularly around protection of children, right? Like if a child is in a dangerous situation at home, we expect the government to do something about it. But, you know, there are kids in dangerous situations all across the country that um, the government hasn't done anything yet. But um, we have seen, in terms of what we could do for smartphones or social media, um, we have seen uh, in some cases some websites like porn sites will ask for ID. And so you need like a verified ID and then it'll let you in. And I'm not sure exactly how successful this is, but it seems that it's had success in the US um, in some states where they've implemented this. So tightening up controls going directly after the social media companies and going, look, if you you can run your company here in Mm -hmm. in our country, but you have to have verified age restricted access to the site in order to operate. You think that sort of... That that could be one way the government does it, I think. I'm, I'm not sure how you could implement restrictions across smartphones more generally, maybe make it a restricted substance. You can't buy it unless you're over a certain age. But, of course, it's parents that buy it for children. I'm not sure how that would happen. Um, but I do understand the scepticism because it's it's not, like, an easy thing to do. Like, it's a quite a big task for the government to take on. Um, so I, I'm not sure exactly how it would work. Definitely in schools, as they're doing currently, is is one way. Um, where the government has control or some sort of authority, um, much more than say in the home. Um, yeah. But I know it would require a lot of thinking. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us, Maddie. We really thanks appreciate your me. thoughts in the column, and yeah, it would be great to to see gains made in this area as yeah. we begin to grapple with this issue. Would you give your child a substance that you knew was going to cause them harm? The answer from any parent would be a resounding no. Yet nowadays, even children as young as 11 have access to supercomputers in the form of smartphones. At the same time, mental health issues among the young, such as anxiety disorders, depression and suicidal thoughts, have risen significantly across the globe. It's interesting that the National Party has banned smartphones in classrooms because of poor education outcomes. Indeed, Smartphones have inhibited students' abilities to pay attention. They're distracting, highly addictive, and impact cognitive performance. But the problems are deeper than academic issues. Since about 2010, rates of anxiety, depression, and suicidal thoughts in young people aged between 18 and 24 have increased more than 200%. These are the people whose childhoods have been characterized by constant internet connection. Not to mention, they have fewer friends and spend less time with their families. We are now seeing that the earlier smartphone use begins, the worse off one's well-being will be in the future. Just last week, the US Surgeon General called for tobacco-style warnings on social media because of its effects on adolescent mental health. Dr Samantha Marsh has suggested that phones should be treated like other addictive substances, kept well away from children, starting with banning phones in schools. The sceptic in all of us, though, may whisper, will banning smartphones really work? Isn't it a parent's job to control the behaviour of their own children? Whatever parents are doing isn't working. Keeping children off the internet can feel like trying to keep them away from sunshine, almost impossible. When they try to do something, they are met with objection, if not physically aggressive behaviour. So it may be time for the government to step in. Parents can then tell their disgruntled kids, it's not me taking your phone, it's just the law. In his book The Anxious Generation, Jonathan Haidt prescribes using only basic phones, no internet, limited apps, before 14, and no social media before 16. We already try to keep other harmful substances away from children. Why should smartphones be any different? For example, the side effects of marijuana include depression, social anxiety, thoughts of suicide and suicide attempts, particularly after long-term use. Sound familiar? Even if people argue over marijuana being legalised, no one is suggesting that we distribute it to children. The same is true for alcohol. It limits our capacities for cognitive function and the damage is worse when given to children, hence illegal drinking age. Skeptics will say again, How do we know that smartphones are causing this? This is all correlation. But Haidt argues causation. Even if it wasn't, wouldn't it be better to err on the side of caution? 
If we care for our children's well-being more than we care about their educational results, action against smartphone use needs to be taken everywhere, not just in schools. Thanks for listening to the Maxim Institute podcast. If you'd like to hear more from us and keep up with the rest of our research and analysis of politics and policy in New Zealand, you can sign up on the homepage of our website to get our monthly forum email and invitations to future Maxim Institute events. You can search and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcasts. From the team at Maxim, Matewa, goodbye for now. <laughs>